Welcome to the Better Together Here podcast with your hosts, Devin and Ashley, helping you make the most of your time in New York City. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Better Together Here podcast. I'm Devin. And I'm Ashley. And we are excited for today's episode for a couple of reasons. Number one, we are going to be talking about one of our favorite neighborhoods, the Upper West Side. We are going to do a full neighborhood guide, similar to what we did for Hell's Kitchen. And another reason we're excited is that we are going to have a couple of our friends who live on the Upper West Side give us some of their favorite spots. They're going to, they sent me audio messages. We're going to include those. So we're going to kind of have honorary guests on this episode. So we're excited. So let's get right into it. First things first, where is the Upper West Side? Like we talked about on the Hell's Kitchen guide, there's like sometimes slight dispute between where neighborhoods start and end. But generally speaking, the Upper West Side goes from Central Park West, so which is the actual road, but kind of you can think the west side of Central Park all the way to Riverside Park, basically to the water, and then from 59th Street to 110th Street. So Hell's Kitchen basically butts up against Upper West Side. So we're kind of taking you from Hell's Kitchen up into Upper West Side for this next guide. What most people think about when they think of the Upper West Side, it is definitely a more family-friendly spot. It's a bit quieter. There are a lot more families and kids, it seems like, than other neighborhoods. It is a lot more mellow. It's mostly residential in the sense that like, there's not big you know, corporate office buildings or things like that. It is mostly residential with, of course, restaurants and bars and things like museums, but it is a very family-friendly spot and a lot quieter than what most people are used to in New York. There's also some good shopping on the Upper West Side as well. The subway lines that kind of run through the Upper West Side, the main one would be the 123. Most of the Upper West Side is going to be easily accessible through the 123 uh, as well as the B and C make some stops. Uh, that's where you will probably ride if you're g- going to go to the Museum of Natural History, which we will talk about later. Uh, one interesting fact that I want to include about the Upper West Side, we'll talk about a couple others later in kind of pop culture, but the Beastie Boys played their first gig in a loft at 100th and Broadway and actually recorded some tracks for their EP Polywog Stew in 1981. So kind of interesting. There's a lot like that on the Upper West Side if you, I, I've read a handful of books like about New York and, and different people's experiences, and it almost always seems like they reference the Upper West Side. So a lot of fun pop culture things there as well. But first, we want to talk about the bars. There is a great bar scene on the Upper West Side. I mentioned that it, the Upper West Side is kind of known for being a little bit more quiet and subdued, but in the right spots, it can be bumping. There can be a lot, a lot going on. I would say the... Almost the majority of our go-to bars are on the Upper West Side that we go to on a regular basis. Yeah, and a couple of those, let's talk about them. Ease Bar is a legendary spot. One of the things that we love about Ease is Wine Wednesday. So Wine every Wednesday w- is the best. It is truly the best. Every Wednesday, wine pours are $7. And they are solid wine pours. They almost always give you a very, very full glass. And if you go at the right time for E's happy hour, which I believe ends before seven, they also have a happy hour burger where their E's burger is, I think it's five or six dollars. And it's really, really solid. Like for a bar burger, it's actually really, really good. Friendly staff, tons of seating. They also have board games there. Outdoor seating when the weather is nice. I mean, E's bar is just, you can never go wrong at E's. Another favorite of ours, they fall under the same umbrella of ownership, and those are Gin Mill and Jake's Dilemma. They are both sports bars with good specials, cheap drinks, sports on at all times, live DJs on the weekends, uh, almost always at Jake's, sometimes at Gin Mill. You can go to Jake's Dilemma, you could drink all night long, and leave spending less than like 30 bucks. Yeah, they always have like a 3 or $4 Bud Light or Bud Light Seltzer that you can get, and they always have great drink specials. That's typically where we end up if we've been going out on like a Friday or Saturday night if we're looking for some place to dance that's playing music that you grew up with, fun music to dance to, fun people to hang out with. Just overall a great time. We love Jake Salama and Jim Mill. Always a solid choice. If you're looking for a more beer forward spot, we have loved Gebhardt's Beer Culture. 
it's kind of a funky layout. You walk downstairs. It's almost like a basement vibe. And when we were there, they had all like classic uh, 80s and 90s movies playing with no audio, like different movies on each TV. Uh, we watched the ma- majority of Jaws. Yeah, I don't think I had ever seen Jaws all the way through before. And that was really crazy watching it at a bar without sound. And just the subtitles. So like you don't get the like cheesy audio and like music soundtrack that goes with it. You just got the subtitles. It was great. Uh, and then Flubber, the yeah, Flubber, Flubber was playing on another TV. <laughs> Uh, and, and great, great beer options. You know, it is kind of more like craft beer spots. So beers are going to be 9 to 12 or $13 range, uh, but there's a wide variety of beers. And so you get to try a lot of different things. Um, a couple other popular spots on the Upper West Side, Blondie's is a staple. You can go onto any forum or Reddit thread about the Upper West Side, about spots to go, and Blondie's will show up. It's been around for a long, long time. It Frankly, when you walk in, feels a little bit dated, uh, but their food menu is good. They have good drink specials from time to time. It's a good spot to go to watch, you know, NFL or March Madness or big sport events. There's tons of seating. It's a, and lots it's a huge of TVs bar. too, and big projectors as well. So you can always get a good view of the game if you go to Blondie's. Good spot for sports. We've also enjoyed Bodega Eighty Eight. Bodega 88, I always feel like I spend a little bit more money than I want to spend, but I'm never disappointed about it. And they have individual TVs. Yeah. So if you're like sitting at a booth with your friends, you have your own TV and usually they'll like change it to whatever game you want to see, which is nice because it's not super loud. You're kind of just like with your own group and you get to just all be looking at your same TV, which is which is fun. Yeah. Makes for a good sound. A lot of other bars. We'll just name a few others. Crossbar is actually a bar, cafe, and like soccer store with a, the downstairs have has like a soccer area for kids. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, Nobody Told Me is a cool cocktail bar. Dive 106 is just what it sounds like. A few others. Amsterdam Ale House, Dublin House, The Dead Poet, The Optimist is nice. Again, if you're looking for different types of beers, uh, The Optimist has a wide range of options. Tons of bars on the Upper West Side. And you can get on Amsterdam up in like the 80s, like in the like mid 70s to like the 90s. And you can just kind of walk up and down and you'll find tons of spots, especially on you know a weekend night. There's always things to see. Which generally you guys have heard me say this before, but I'm always a fan of that. Just like if you're going to just walk around and want to bar hop, I would just start around like 72nd in Amsterdam and walk north and just follow your nose. Look at the menu, see what looks fun see what sounds fun, and just find a place that seems like it fits your vibe. And before you do that, make sure you go to one of the many phenomenal Upper West Side restaurants. Really, there are so many. It's a a great food spot. It's honestly underrated. We wrote down a lot, and we will talk about most of them. When you go to E's Bar, like we mentioned earlier, before you go in, go over to Tiki Chick and get one of their chicken sandwiches. They're $5.00. And they are like full size chicken sandwich. And they have, I think, four or five different options. They have like a Hawaiian one. They have a spicy one. They are super, super good. The drinks uh, at Tiki Chick, a little bit expensive and like kind of overly sweet for my preference, but uh, a great spot to get their chicken sandwich. Uh, Mice on Pickle, we have been to and really, really enjoyed. One of our new favorites, we've probably had it three times in the past month, is Chick Chick. Holy cow. Chick Chick has... Chick Chick is insane. It's so good. It's the best fried chicken I've had maybe in my life. I, I mean, I can't think of anything else. I can't think of another spot that has better fried chicken that I've personally had. It's amazing. They have all kinds of different sauces. The prices are relatively fair. We actually, one night, were looking at... We were craving Chick-fil-A, and we looked at the prices, and we're like, this seems a little bit too high. And Chick Chick was cheaper than Chick-fil-A. That's just kind of a sidebar. Amazing chicken. If I was going to recommend one spot out of all these restaurants we're going to talk about, it might be Chick Chick. There's a couple others that would be close in contention on the Upper West Side, but Chick Chick is, you can't go wrong. Another popular spot, arguably the most well-known Upper West Side restaurant is Jacob's Pickles. And our friend BJ is going to tell us about Jacob's Pickles, why he likes it, what he gets. Uh, BJ's lived on the Upper West Side for a good portion of his time here in New York. He's an Upper West Side guy, so he's going to tell us about Jacob's Pickles. First, want to start by saying thank you 
to Devin and Ashley for having me on the Better Together Here podcast. I'm a first time caller, but uh, definitely been a long time listener. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite restaurants on the Upper West Side uh, called Jacob's Pickle. Pickle, excuse me. It is on 85th in Amsterdam. It is a great, great brunch spot. Jacob's Pickle, to give a little background, is Southern comfort food. I know that's might be probably the first thing you think of when you think of New York City. You think, yes, I got to go to a Southern comfort food brunch spot. Jacob's Pickle will not disappoint you in any way. It is a wonderful place to go. It, first, the atmosphere and ambiance is it's upbeat. They got great music playing. It's a large space. They have great indoor seating, great outdoor seating, a lot of options there. I would recommend, however, if you're coming in town, that you most likely want to make a reservation beforehand. It tends to get very busy, especially on the weekends. You can be waiting an hour, maybe two sometimes without that reservation. So I would recommend doing that. In terms of your dining experience, things you want to potentially order, I'll preface also by saying Jacob's Pickles gives you very, very large portions. So plan ahead for that. Maybe don't order too much because you're going to get a, a huge portion of food and you will not leave there feeling hungry. Usual things when I get there, when I'm there, what I get is in terms of appetizers, I would highly recommend the fried pickles, deviled eggs. And what my dad loves to order is the biscuits and fixins. Comes with a few different biscuit options, a bunch of different jams, jellies, special butter that they make in house. Uh, so would recommend those in terms of appetizers. And then for your mains, uh, you can't go wrong with any other biscuit sandwiches. I've tried the honey chicken and pickles, the hot chicken biscuits. My favorite is the sausage gravy smothered chicken sandwich. And then lastly, for um, in terms of it being a brunch spot, for those who are of age and inclined, my favorite drink to get there is the Kentucky Porch Sipper, which is a bourbon with uh, citrus lime and a few other things added in. And it's always very refreshing and just wanted to also just say thank you again, Devin Ashley. Appreciate you having me on. And if I could, I'd love to shout out uh, the real MVPs of the Stag uh, household, Sonny and Scout. Great insight. You can never go wrong with Jacob's Pickles. Portions are massive. Everything about it is good. If you are looking for a slice on the Upper West Side, well, I do think that the Upper West Side lacks a lot of pizza spots. Um, one that's really good is Made in New York Pizza. Um, you're going to spend anywhere from like four to six per slice, maybe three to six. Which, you know, when you can get a dollar slice, it like feels different, but it's much higher quality. Great, great pizza. Always have a lot of different options uh, and they're open late. So that's always nice. It happens to be right across the street from Jake's Dilemma. So if you're bar hopping and want to slice some pizza before you go to your next bar, hit up Made in New York Pizza before going to Jake's Dilemma's. Another spot kind of along that same line is 7th Street Burger. The original location is on 7th Street down in like Lower East Side. Uh, but they opened a location on the Upper West. You literally can walk in and order and leave with your burger in like seven seconds. Like the one time I did it, they like made it so fast and it was ready and it was so good. Can't go wrong with 7th Street. A couple other places that we have liked uh, on the Upper West, Kasaki Sushi. It's the omakase style sushi. Oh my word. So good. It was some of the best sushi I've ever had. It was every single piece of the menu was handcrafted to complement each other. And it was amazing. So, so good. Tap NYC is a good spot if you are looking like for like a quick lunch or a breakfast even. It's kind of a cafe type with acai bowls. They have good like vegetarian vegan options, good coffee, a good place to work if you want to do that, that type of place. Flame, if you like hibachi style, this is our go-to spot for hibachi, um, mainly because, I mean, for a couple of reasons, but the pricing is always really fair, especially when it comes to hibachi. The staff is friendly. It's never super crowded and the food's good. Like we've, we've gone there a few times and always loved it. Flame. Very, very good option. Another spot we personally have not been to, but our good friend T is going to tell us about Saiget. I think I'm saying that right. He loves this spot. He's been trying to get me to go there so many times and it just hasn't happened. But let's hear what T has to say about Saget. I firstly want to say that it is such an honor to be a part of your podcast today. 
Uh, it's a special feeling. You two are two of my best friends since I moved to New York City. And it's now been about 20 months, so I don't consider myself an expert in this city in any way. But I kind of cling to a few spots on the Upper West Side. Uh, and to be a part of this podcast, the fact that you asked me makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. Much like my favorite restaurant on the Upper West Side, Saiget. Now, I'll preface this by saying that my dining preferences are typically aligned more so towards casual dining experiences. I'm looking for cheaper foods that are done really well. Uh, Things like, you know, soup, salad, sandwiches. I do consider myself a little bit of a sandwich connoisseur. And Saiget has some of the best banh mi that I've ever had in my life. And it is your literal definition of a hole in the wall. There's no indoor dining there. You walk in on 106 in Columbus, and it's just a counter where you can order your sandwiches. I've had all kinds of different things here. Uh, I've had appetizers of the spare ribs. I've had the nim. I've had bao buns. I've had these crispy fried tofu skin things. I've had spring rolls, and every single thing has been unbelievable. For the entrees, I haven't had any of the pho yet. I've had some of the plates with the meats, and they're all really good, but the best thing by far is the banh mi, which you should just take that from the name Saiget. And what really sets them apart is the bread that they use. It is pillowy and soft and somehow lightly toasted on the outside. It's super crispy. And every single meat that I've had has been fantastic. I've had crispy, spicy chicken. I've had shrimp. I've had the pate. I have had flank steak, which is my second favorite, but my absolute favorite thing there is the lemongrass pork shoulder banh mi. It is a revelation It takes me back to my days growing up eating pork steaks in St. Louis is what we call them. Uh, It's like a delicious pork shoulder barbecue item. And this really reminds me of that. It's got this heavy lemongrass flavor, but it's so tender, so moist, and they get an amazing char on the outside. Comes with fresh vegetables on top, some spicy sauces. And I almost always get a uh, Vietnamese iced coffee with it, which is basically like diabetes in a cup. It's coffee with condensed milk and sugar. And they use one of those sealing machines that they use to make the bubble tea where it's got the plastic film on top and you jab the straw through it. But it is so good. I get it every time. But I am a sucker for really, really sugary foods. Uh, I sometimes would say I have the taste buds of like a 10-year-old. Trust me on the sandwich here. It is fantastic. You have to go. You have to first try the lemongrass pork shoulder banh mi. You won't regret it. Great insight, as always. The man loves food. He is our foodie friend, for sure. Sandwich boy. Sandwich boy. Sandwich man is what he would say if he was here. And those are our two friends from St. Louis. Shout out to St. Louis. If you didn't know, every everything is from St. Louis. Just like look at like the back of a package. Like look at your dog's food. It's probably from St. Louis. Uh, look at your beer. It's probably from St. Louis. Look at your favorite rapper who sings Tipsy named Jay Kwan. He's from St. Louis. Like there's just it, St. Louis. That's a topic for another day. I got to say, BJ and T put St. Louis on the map for me. Yeah, certainly. So in case you're wondering... Our friends put St. Louis on the map. Another spot that we love here on the Upper West Side is Chama Mama, which is Georgian food. And my lord, the cheese, the cheese bread, bread with like the with an egg. Oh, uh, I don't even know how to describe. It's amazing. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you've never had Georgian food, Google cheese bread with egg Georgian food. Yeah, it'll. It's amazing. It's like a little bread bowl with cheese and like a raw egg inside that gets twisted around and you dip the bread in it's insane it's so good it's so good you get that you get some georgian wine oh man it's a good time and 
last but not least of what we're going to talk about here is Pure Eye Cafe. So we're kind of going to segue this into the things to do on the Upper West Side category. So Pure Eye Cafe is along Riverside Park. It's right on the water. It's definitely more of a summertime type thing. I believe that in the dead of winter, it's not even open. But from spring to fall... Pure Eye Cafe is my favorite spot to take my dogs on a nice day. It's right in the middle of Hudson River Park. And there's tons of seating. It's very dog friendly. They even give like little dog biscuits when you pick up your food. You order at the counter. They give you a buzzer. Great prices. My favorite thing to eat there is the chicken Caesar salad. They also have really amazing beers on tap and Old Bay fries as well. So definitely check out Pure Eye Cafe if you want a little moment by the water, want to grab a snack, want to grab a beer. Just like a low-key spot to hang out on a pretty day. Walk around Hudson River Park. Highly, highly recommend it. Can't go wrong at Pure Eye Cafe, especially on a nice spring, summer day. Great spot to get some sun. And arguably the most famous spot on all of the Upper West Side is the Museum of Natural History. This might be one of my favorite museums in the entire city. I wouldn't say it's only for kids. It is slightly geared more towards younger kids and like, into you know maybe young teen ages but there's so much to see at the museum of natural history and there i mean it is a massive museum it has everything from dinosaurs to mammals to the hall of gems which i believe was supposed to be my personal favorite yeah i think it was going to be temporary but it's been there for quite a while now if you can go to the museum of natural history it is worth it just to go to the Hall of Gems or Gemstones. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but they have the most obscene amount of different gems and minerals and those types of things on display. So much so like you'll, you could spend hours in this part of the Museum of Natural History. They have an amethyst that is 10 feet tall, something like that. Maybe like 15 or 18 feet tall. Like right when you walk into the exhibit, there's a ginormous like amethyst geode that's absolutely breathtaking. Even if you're an adult and you liked to collect rocks as a child like you should absolutely go to the hall of gems if if you think you have outgrown rocks try out the hall of gems because you have not outgrown rocks and they have some good interactive kind of displays in there as well and that's throughout the museum of natural history and i think that's kind of the the pull of the museum of natural history compared to like going to the med or going to the moma is it's you know you're just enjoying really really high quality art but at the museum of natural history it's more about learning it's more about engaging it's a space section and there are kind of hands-on activities so great for adults great for children you could spend hours there so much to see Uh, another really fun thing to do on the upper west side if you're visiting you've got to go to zay bars so zay bars is a jewish grocery and deli that has been on the upper west side for quite some time and it is a sight to behold They have so many different types, Uh, like their deli area is huge. So many different types of cheeses and meats and they have loose leaf teas and they have an entire section of olives that are, you know, bigger than some grocery stores. Like it's just, it's its own experience and all of their baked goods, amazing. Everything there, so, so good. Definitely try a black and white cookie from Zabar's. That's like a classic New York dessert. If you've never had it, get a black and white from Zay Bars. Yeah. Don't think it's just a grocery store. Like it, it is a place to go and just experience, grab a quick snack and head on your way. And you can head to Riverside Park. So we've been, we've been talking about uh, Riverside Park, Hudson River Park. They kind of bleed together. Riverside Park is in like the more upper part of the Upper West Side. It's an amazing park. It's kind of interesting because it's not like a wide type park per se, but it is just like, it goes the length of the Upper West Side along the water. So it's a beautiful place to like walk a dog, have a good bike ride. There's a good bike path through Riverside Park. It is an underrated part of New York City for sure. And it's worth going and exploring while while you're on the Upper West Side, at least just, you know, popping in for a couple blocks and enjoying Riverside Park and then coming back out to wherever you're going. Another famous spot on the Upper West Side is the Beacon Theater. Many, many famous musicians, comedians, artists have played at Beacon Theater. Uh, We've seen Jerry Seinfeld there. We saw Nate Bargatze 
at Beacon Theater. It is a, it's a beautiful theater, and there's truly no bad seat. We sat on the very, very back row for Jerry Seinfeld. Still had a great time. Uh, can't go wrong with Beacon Theater. And there's this is right near a lot of the kind of popular food spots and, and kind of like lively night area too. So see a show at Beacon Theater and, you know, go explore the Upper West Side. Um, along lines of Jerry Seinfeld and kind of a couple like the pop culture things. So the Jerry Seinfeld and Cosmo Kramer apartment is on the Upper West Side. It's not that exciting when you just look at the outside, but it is, you know, if you're a Seinfeld fan, it's, it's worth walking by. There's a lot of Seinfeld stuff on the Upper West Side because, you know, that's where they live on Seinfeld. There's also the Dakota, which is a very famous building right along Central Park West that John Lennon lived in and was killed outside of, I believe. A lot of famous people have lived there. Uh, it's actually a really, really pretty building as well. Uh, and speaking of pretty buildings, the last spot on our things to do on the Upper West Side is the Metropolitan Opera House. That's in the Lincoln Center area, so it's kind of further down south. It's in like the 62, 62nd, 63rd Street, yeah, around there. The Metropolitan Opera House, I would say, is arguably one of the most beautiful theaters I've ever been into. Absolutely. Like, when uh, you Chandelier right when you walk in is breathtaking. And the nice thing, too, about the Metropolitan Opera House is even if you're not going to like go to a show there or you know see a concert or anything like that, just walking around like the grounds of that area, a lot of really beautiful architecture, a lot to see and just kind of like take in a very kind of just picturesque New York City spot. And the last one that we are going to say as we're talking about theater is kind of this secret spot for getting cheap Broadway tickets. And that's the TKTS booth or the tickets booth. So there's the tickets booth in Times Square that most people know about. Basically, they on the day of, you can get highly discounted tickets to Broadway shows, but there is actually a TKTS booth on the Upper West Side. Um, it is very, very close to the Metropolitan Opera House, and there is rarely a line. And if there is a line, it won't be longer than probably 10 to 15 minutes, whereas if you try to go to the Times Square TKTS booth to get day of Broadway tickets, you might be waiting in line for an hour or longer. So the TKTS booth. And that's our very high level overview guide of the Upper West Side. It is a very quaint area of New York. It's a fun, it, I love, what I love about the Upper West Side is that it, is, it has this nice blend of being family friendly, being a little bit more quiet, being really, really safe, very low crime rates, those types of things, but also has like a great nightlife, great bars, great restaurants, tons of things to do. And what I love about the Upper West Side too you're close to Central Park. So you can kind of pop in, explore the Upper West Side, go into Central Park. Like if you're here traveling, it's really easy to make an Upper West Side day or at least an afternoon a part of your trip. And if you're looking for something that's a little bit less touristy, I feel like giving yourself a day to walk around the Upper West Side and just hang out there, find a restaurant, find a bar, find some things to do, Upper West Side is a very great use of your time if you're wanting to do something that the locals are doing. And, and beautiful architecture as well. So many beautiful buildings, unique buildings, tree-lined streets. I mean, it's just truly a beautiful spot to explore. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have not already, please sign up for our newsletter. Just go to bettertogetherhere.com backslash newsletter. Subscribe, follow us on all the podcast platforms, all the social media. You can just search Better Together Here. We will show up. And other than that, we'll catch you on the next episode. Aww.